Vinyl Collection Part 54. It has been over four months since my last inclusion into this series, so I feel like this video is much needed. Before I get into talking about the records for this part, just want to state a few things. One being the fact that last night I saw Chelsea Wolfe, hence why I have her latest record here beside me. Great performance. Along with the fact that next week will be a video that I have been working on for months. Easily the most researched and most amount of effort I probably ever put into a video, which I'm really excited to do. That being the stop motion film iceberg chart. The only thing holding me back is I want to watch roughly around another like three or four more films to fully flesh out this chart. But uh, after putting in so much research and work to find all these films and to see it nearly being fully done, all I need to do is record it. I'm really excited to uh, have this up and see all the wild discussions being uh, thrown my way when the video is up. So just overall, I'm really excited for it and I can't wait for you guys to see it next week. And lastly, what we'll be playing in the background is going to be Grave Pilgrim. To be honest with you guys, over the past handful of months, I haven't been listening to that much extreme metal. Not that I've lost interest with it, it's just the fact that I've been finding interest with other forms of music. But one thing that always drives me back into finding interest with black metal is bands like Grey Pilgrim. And the best way I could describe these guys is it's basically Peste Noir with that kind of like style of black metal that kind of, you know, encompasses all other different forms of like acoustic folk music. Only their uh, take on it is a lot more westernized with a lot of like American like history kind of embedded within it. And it's really interesting stuff that again I would recommend to people who enjoy Umfell, Pest Noir obviously, to definitely check out Grave Pilgrim. Kicking this vinyl collection part off is going to be the latest full length album by Exhumed to the Dead released in 2022 which just showcases how far behind I am in this series. Now, if you don't know, Exhumed is a very long running, because they've been active now for over 30 years, uh, death grind band that originally started out as a gore grind band to basically be kind of like a carcass worship band. But to be honest with you guys, over the years since they've transitioned more into like this, you know, death grind that has like an essence of thrash metal, they've kind of found like their own style that uh, has always resonated with me. I guess that has to do with the fact that Exhumed is one of the first ever death metal bands I found on my own back when I was in high school. And to be honest with you guys, To The Dead, their latest album right here, is absolutely nothing new or different from what they've been doing for the past 20 years. Other than the fact that, to be honest, it's quite catchy and I find this album to be quite fun to listen to. Songs on here like Carbonized, uh, Drained of Color, No Headstone Unturned, just fast, violent, in a blitz of just like death grind chaos being kind of like pummeled over you that um, overall it's just the fun listen if you're in the mood for like a really kind of like short album is it's only like 30 minutes long but definitely hits the spot when you're looking for like blood soaked death grind as to where you can get this pretty sure relapse carries copies still and other than that for the layout and packaging with this you have album artwork with some spot gloss around the uh, band logo and on the album title as well. Backside with the track listings, once again, spot glossed on the lettering. This comes with an insert sheet, both sides with lyrics and band photo. And this final pressing comes on like, I guess a merge of red, white, yellow, and black, I guess, uh, with some splatter and it's limited to 300 copies. Up next is the self-titled demo by Faceless Entity. This is a raw black metal band from the Netherlands that a handful of years ago, roughly around like 2016, 2017, I was like really fascinated with like esoteric raw black metal bands and trying to collect as much as I could. That uh, over the years, I've definitely lost a lot of interest with this uh, style of uh, black metal. Yet, um, I think what kind of intrigues me about Faceless Entity is there's a strong essence of like this ghostly, spiritual atmosphere they try to indulge the listener in. Again, kind of similar to Black Solis, but just even more stripped down. Definitely not for everyone, it's really for the 
black metal listeners that try to go as abrasive and as raw and lo-fi as possible, Faceless Entity might resonate with you, but um, other than that, there's really not much else to say about this other than it only contains three tracks and they're really lengthy and they're really just kind of meant to drown the listener in just death, dark, abrasive atmospheres, which is kind of like what a lot of other raw black metal bands do, so it's really only meant for one particular uh, audience. Other than that, really not much else to say about it. So for the layout and packaging with it, you have this album artwork, which I'll be honest is quite eerie and creepy, having like these really old looking photographs of like individuals with their faces kind of blurred out. Backside with the same types of photography. And this is limited to 200 copies. I have number 161 hand numbered, which is really cool. And if you didn't notice already, which I'll just state, it comes with an OB strip. This includes an insert sheet with credits and song titles, along with more kind of like grainy photography on the other side. And as you would guess, just comes on a standard black vinyl. Proceeding on next to Falkenbach. This is their debut full-length album, originally released in 1996, but I have the Prophecy reissue from 2020. Now, if you don't know Falkenbach, this is a German black metal band that also encompasses Viking metal into their sound with other forms of folk music. That if you enjoy late era Bathory, most particularly the albums Nordland 1 and 2, and you wish there was a part 3 or 4, this whole project feels like a spiritual successor to late era Bathory that I would strongly recommend checking out because everything this project has done is stellar and it's a damn shame as of right now this is the only album I have of theirs on vinyl. Another way I could describe Falkenbach is it's very similar to what Enslaved does only it's heavier and honestly way better to be honest with you because again they both do like the same types of uh, songwriting but Falkenbach just it hits so much harder and better that uh, with this particular album right here their debut they go for more of like a stripped down raw black metal approach that's more aggressive and groove oriented which there are forms of folk music scattered throughout that um, kind of fleshes out their own unique style but if you are inclined to check out Falkenbach definitely check out later era as they start adding in a lot more folk instrumentation the black metal usage is kind of laid back a bit more with just stronger compositions. Just overall, everything Falkenbach has done has been great in my honest view. But um, yeah, if you're going for more of the stripped down aggressive approach, start here with the debut full length album. And um, yeah, other than that, for the layout and packaging with this, you have album artwork with uh, kind of like some golden stamp foil with the uh, band logo, which looks really cool spot gloss on the album artwork and album title on the bottom backside with the track listings comes on a gatefold with lyrics inside and this vinyl press comes on gray next record is something that i feel kind of odd talking about and i'll explain why first off it's faust with their 2022 album Dalmenbruch, which i believe is german for broken Thumb, if I'm not mistaken and why I feel really odd talking about it is because originally when I bought this record it was in Iceland me and my wife at the time were on our honeymoon and we stopped at every record store that we could in Reykjavik and one of them had a uh, record store that was really full of electronic and abstract albums and none of it I recognized other than this album because of the name Faust and I was thinking okay this is the German kraut rock band from the 70s and this must be a reissue of that 1971 full length album so definitely wanted to buy it and be more familiar with kraut rock because I remember back when I did like the strangest albums that I know a lot of you guys were talking about Faust and it was really intriguing how um, back in the 70s there was such wild music coming out and kraut rock was something very abstract from the norm of really any genre you can think of. So I was uh, intrigued to get that album. What I ended up getting was a totally different album that I should have done research on, that being right here, uh, Dominbrook. And technically, 
it is Faust, but it's not at the same time because doing research on Faust, all the members kind of like disbanded and did like their own parallel projects to uh, the original Project Faust. What minor changes, maybe like some of the members were led by uh, different people or the band name, maybe one of them has like an uppercase F, this one has a lowercase F. And um, it's all in the same vein of Krautrock, it's just kind of conducted by different members of the original lineup. And with this album right here, um, it's only three tracks. All three tracks are really lengthy as the first song is over 22 minutes long, the second song is nearly 15 minutes long, and the third song is almost 9 minutes long. And it's not as wild and eventful as, say, the 1971 album by Faust. It's a lot more um, minimalistic, and the electronics kind of like build to all different like textures and transitions that slowly come through. That it's more of like a slow burn abstract album that kind of dips his toes into a kraut rock every so often. But um, I just feel weird talking about it because it's not the album I thought I was getting. So I don't really have much else to say about it. But I'll keep it for the sentimental value that I got it on my honeymoon. <laughs> but um, other than that, for the layout and packaging with this album, you have album artwork backside with the album title and track listings. This also comes on a printed inner sleeve, one side with the artwork, other side with uh, credits and notes all about the album, and just comes on standard black vinyl. Moving on to Veritarium with their third full-length album, Calvary. This is a French black metal band that's very much in vain of what a lot of modern French black metal bands are doing of that very high energy, explosive, hyper melodic take on black metal that if you enjoy names like Vehemont, Soufnifer, Airlac, or Spectre, if any of those names ring a bell to you, definitely check this out. Because once again, I feel like what modern uh, black metal bands and France are doing is they take the formula of dissection, storm the lights, bane, but just make it faster. And it's just really harmonizing and honestly infectious black metal that I just can't seem to get sick of and when I'm ever able to find albums like this on web stores I snag them up immediately because they tend to sell out but um, yeah other than that uh, not much else to say with this particular album so when it comes to the layout and packaging you have album artwork backside with the band logo and track listings for some reason this band included a sticky note just saying cheers from France I don't know if they give this to everyone or for some reason me, whatever, but really cool. So I just kind of include it and keep it with the vinyl. This also includes an insert sheet, one side with the album artwork, other side with track listing, and I'm assuming the lyrics, but they're all in French. And this vinyl pressing comes on gray marble. Then I got Fields of the Nephilim with their 1990 album, Lusium which this was quite the fine to get as well. Just like with the Faust record I talked about a minute ago, I found this as well in Iceland on my honeymoon. And um, what was weird about it was the record store we ended up going to, at the front entrance, you can be there with a backpack or a purse as uh, it was all the CDs and the owner could witness everything that goes on. Yet in the second room that had all the records, you couldn't enter it if you had a backpack or purse, so I ended up going in the back and flipping through the records, obviously came across this and messaged my wife saying, isn't this one of the bands that you always talked about that when you were getting into goth rock as a kid, as a teenager, I should say, uh, you obsessed over this? And she immediately replied back with, why, if you don't buy this, then I'll buy it. So honestly snagged it up. And I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but if you're trying to get into goth rock, this is one of the essentials along with like, you know, Susie and the Banshees, um, Sisters of Mercy, Christian Death, Fields of the Nephilim is right up there as one of the essentials. And I know the song on here, what is it, uh, For Her Light, will definitely get you immersed with their very moody, dark, and catchy songwriting in goth rock. And it's a phenomenal album. And lastly, one thing I want to bring up here that I think is really cool, that even though this is uh, kind of beaten up with the uh, corner dings and ring wear, this is an original first press from Beggar's Banquet, originally obviously released in 1990. So even though it's beaten up for a record to be, what, 34 years of age, 
for it to still be in this quality and obviously the vinyl itself is in good quality with no skips I consider this one hell of a find to get in Iceland out of all places and uh, quite the rarity now in my uh, vinyl collection but um, yeah other than that for the layout and packaging with it you have the album artwork backside with the band name and album title this is on a printed inner sleeve both side with just credits and notes about the album and just comes on plain black vinyl proceeding on to florence and the machine with her latest full and thumb from 2022 fever a personal favorite of mine from that year that i've always been a fan of florence's vocals i think she has a very distinct sound in pop music which uh I don't know, it's quite hard to come by, I feel like. And I know to an extent you could say it's kind of like influenced by, you know, Kate Bush, especially her appearance and a lot of her music videos kind of go in that very like ethereal, kind of like animated look. But with this particular album, I'm gonna be real, it kind of feels a bit more occultish in a sense. I mean, it's still got like that art pop type of sound, but the aesthetic is definitely more in like this occultish vein, I feel like, that, uh, Definitely got me more intrigued into this particular album from her previous works that she's done. Songs in here like Girls Against God, Cassandra, Heaven Is Here, and I believe it's Back In Town. Pretty catchy tunes that uh, overall for me, Florence and the Machines, I've just always again enjoyed particularly Florence's vocals on here. And though I don't spin it as much as I did when I first got it, um, I still think it's worth checking out, but her Debut full length album being uh, Lungs, I think will always be her best, but still cool to see after like, what, 15 plus years of being active, she can still release uh, captivating music. Other than that, for the layout and packaging with this, you have album artwork, backside with the track listings, comes on a gatefold that I think is meant to be looked vertically as such of Florence. Double LP that come with both printed inner sleeves, just both sides A and B with lyrics, along with side C with more additional lyrics, and side D with just credits and I believe notes about the album. And this final edition comes on brown and side D is dead wax with just like this kind of like pattern on it which looks pretty neat. Once again, another record that I got when I was in Iceland. This is the EP by Forsman, uh, titled, uh, pff, I have no clue, that's in Icelandic, so I'm not going to butcher that. But how I got this record is uh, quite the interesting story, as, again, on the honeymoon to Iceland, that was my second time going to Iceland. Originally, my first time was back in 2018, and when I went there the first time, I met a internet friend, basically, that amazingly has been watching my videos ever since it kind of like I started all the way back in 2014. His name is um, Haykor. I am hopefully saying your name somewhat correctly. If not, please make fun of me with all your friends. Um, and I remember him inviting me to a show that he was playing because, you know, he does guitar and vocals for a multitude of different bands uh, for obviously Force Men along with other like hardcore punk bands. And the dude is really talented. And what's really crazy is the second time now going to Iceland, I caught one of his uh, shows because it was a free show uh, in Iceland that was like all metal and hardcore punk. And lord and behold, he was playing at that festival. Caught up with him because it was the first time I, uh, you know, was interacting with him face to face in like five years. And uh, we ended up deciding to meet up again at a bar, have some drinks, and you know, me let him uh, meet my wife and whatnot, and he was gracious enough to just give me this record that he worked on in the band, Forceman, which was put out through Vaughn Records, so good to see that he's moving up in the world with getting uh, being signed to a really respected label in the, the realms of black metal. And uh, overall, this is just really solid and well done Icelandic black metal that's in vain of like, you know, Miss Thurming, Savannah Doughty, Nadra and Samara, if those bands pique your interest. Fourthman definitely uh, takes that style uh, with their approach here and just expands upon it. Again, in that very dissonant, cavernous, yet very um, high energy form of black metal. And 
Hopefully they do more with it, because right here it's just like an EP of four songs that's roughly a little under 30 minutes long, but really promising stuff overall, and Hakura once again just uh, really showing and expanding his uh, guitar playing skill very well on this album. So once again, dude, thanks so much, and hopefully we cross paths again later on in life. But uh, yeah, you can get this on Vaughn Records still. Tons of copies of available there, and definitely support uh, Fourthman if you can. As for the layout and packaging with this, you have album artwork, backside with the band logo and track listing, comes on a gatefold with band photos. This also includes a fold-out sheet with just all lyrics inside, and the back of it, once again, another band photo. And this final edition comes on marble purple. Next record is the debut full-length album by Forteress, Metal Noir, Quebecois. Finally, finally, oh, finally, this freaking thing got a reissue because me, along with so many other people, have been dying to get this record on the LP format because the first press has been long gone sold out and it goes for dumb money if you're lucky to even see a copy pop up on Discogs. And when Sepulchral Productions finally announced a reissue, everyone was just basically foaming at the mouth to wait for the pre-orders to go up. And I snagged a copy without even looking at the price tag because this album is incredible. If you're trying to get into Quebec black metal, this is kind of like the forerunner for it to really lay out the blueprints as it's very you know, prideful and triumphant in its approach of like this raw atmospheric black metal type of style that just has a lot of this cultural heritage kind of like embedded within their approach as I believe this is a Canadian French violinist that they've used samples of, of his work into the music and it just really, you know, flushes out and engulfs you in the kind of like cultural, um, kind of like mood and setting they're going for and it's just an incredible piece of black metal that if you don't know Fortress and you're a black metal fan shame on fucking you because this right here is one of the best to do it uh, right now I feel like everything they've done top-notch stuff and the debut full-length album definitely set them trailblazing for so many other uh, Quebec black metal bands to kind of follow this formula of like very prideful and grand yet powerful uh, atmospheric like raw black metal so essential stuff that I can't recommend enough for any and all black metal fans not sure if it's still available on sepulchral productions but if it is snag a copy because uh, I can't imagine that this thing hasn't sold out already but if it isn't get them while you can as for the layout and packaging with it you have the album artwork which I'm pretty sure for the CDs this was the album artwork, but for the first press uh, vinyl, um, it was a different artwork. So, I don't know, kind of cool that they used the CD artwork for the reissue. Backside with the track listings. This also includes a few goodies, one of which being a double-sided uh, A2 poster. Uh, again, both sides are the same thing with the band logo for the rest, the album title, and this dude with a musket. Along with a lyric sheet, one side has the lyrics, other side has additional artwork, and just comes on standard black vinyl. The Gauntlet, Dark Steel, and Fire. This is their debut full and thumb released last year in 2023, and if you are a fan of the latest Hell Ripper record, which so many people were gushing over last year, the mixture of, I guess, proto, black metal, speed metal, thrash, and traditional heavy metal, this will definitely hit the spot. The only difference being that the Gauntlet has a lot more of this rock and roll attitude and mindset embedded into their songwriting that makes it all the more animated, over the top, and honestly fun as hell. Because I mean, just look at the album artwork. So, apologies by the way for the glare of the lighting I got going on right here. But you got some dude <laughs> in this gargoyle uh, knight armor set about to run over these demons while riding. A motorcycle like it's ridiculous as all hell and it works with the attitude and sound going on here because it's just got like this blazing fast sharp as steel dark twisted heavy metal sound that is just as I stated so fun to listen to if you're looking for an album that's no fill and all thrills of dark twisted speed metal 
strongly recommend you listen to this album. I got my copy right here through Eternal Death, their band camp. Not sure if they're still available, but from what I remember, they announced represses, so go there if you want to score a copy. As for the layout and packaging with it, you have album artwork, backside with the band logo, album title, and track listing. This includes an insert sheet, one side with lyrics, other side with the contact information. And this final edition is the second press on this very dark purple variant. Gauze, Equalizing Distort. This is a Japanese hardcore punk band that formed back in 1981, and they disbanded actually recently in 2022, only two years ago. So they were active for over 40 years, which is really impressive. But overall, I don't know that much about nearly hardcore punk as a whole, other than the Japanese punk scene just seemed a lot more abrasive, destructive, louder, aggressive, and just sharper. That uh, has always intrigued me to kind of explore the realms of uh, hardcore punk, at least in the Japanese scene. And I feel like metal fans, if you're trying to get into punk and hardcore punk, Jap Japan overall has some uh, pretty good stuff. And Gauze with Equalizing Distort, it's just really straightforward, simplistic, but loud and aggressive hardcore punk where every song kind of just stands shoulder to shoulder with one another. And overall, it's just a fun listen. Got this at Armageddon uh, like two or three years ago. And um, I don't know, I'm not always in the mood for this style of music, but bands like Gauze, uh, Gizm, which I know is a really obvious choice, along with, um, oh, what's the other one? Disclose definitely hits the spot for me but uh, not much else I can say about this album. As for the layout and packaging with it, it's a repress from 2017, so you have album artwork, backside with the album title, and this variant comes on semi-translucent red. Reaching towards the end now in this final collection part, there's four records left and there's only two different bands to talk about. But the first one up is Genocide Organ with their debut full and album from 1989, which hopefully I say somewhat correctly, um, Leichen Linier, which apologies to the German language right there, but that translates to English to Corpse Line. And from what I was able to gather, the album artwork right here is a photo of all dead German soldiers photographed by a Soviet soldier, obviously in World War II. Now, if you don't know Genocide Organ, they are one of the forerunners to that, the style of music known as Death Industrial. And it's quite difficult to describe exactly what this style of music is um, from my own interpretation, which I might be a little bit off here, which by all means, please correct me on it. But it's like a very dense and uh, kind of like <sighs> ear pulsing uh, take on noise music where the compositions, if you even want to call it that, are extremely minimalistic. And it's just meant to paint a very dense and uh, bleak, grim world uh, that we live in. So, again, it's quite hard to dis uh, describe exactly what it is, but I just feel like it's a very dense and extreme take on like industrial and noise music. That uh, If you want to get familiar with that style, check out Genocide Organ, Atrex Morgue, and uh, Brighter Death now. But Genocide Organ has always intrigued me because it seems like with their themes anyway, and how the music's supposed to represent it, is they have this fascination with all these uh, esoteric atrocities and just make music that kind of symbolizes it, I guess. And it really starts to become quite disturbing, honestly. And that's why I always find interest to just know what these albums are about or seek what these... Um, lyrics where they scream it out or all the audio samples that they use exactly what they're trying to uh, discuss about and it's some very extreme misanthropic and hateful topics that I really do feel like pushes the limit of what you know an individual or artist can have on any form of music so uh, yeah that's where the interest really kind of comes in with me with Genocide Organ and what's crazy about all of this is I found this record in a record store. It wasn't on Tesco, which is their label that uh, is owned by the uh, members of Genocide Organ. Remember, uh, in July 4th uh, weekend, I spent a uh, you know weekend, obviously, uh, with my friends in Philadelphia, and I forget what record store it was, but one of my friends, I, uh, Spencer, hyped it up really heavily, 
And I was just amazed to see a genocide organ record in a public store and picked it up immediately. But I would say this is my favorite of theirs because uh, songs on here, which uh, they're not shown on the back. Um, oh, what song is it? I'll, I think it's, uh, which one? Stalin's Origin. Yeah, Stalin's Origin. Um, it's probably my favorite song on the album. It just kind of has like some rhythm kind of flow with it. But make no mistake about it, it's very ear piercing and harsh as you would expect. But yeah, I know I'm repeating myself here. You want to get into Death Industrial, Genocide Organ is a great place to start if you have the stomach and ear duration for it. As for the layout and packaging with it, you have album artwork, backside, comes with this insert sheet with the uh, track listing and just more additional notes and artwork about it. Backside has nothing on it and just comes on standard black vinyl. I also got Genocide Organ again, this being their live album of Live in Japan 2007. Now typically I do not buy live albums. This is more of a collector piece mainly because I remember this is back when Clara and I were first dating. We went uh, to Boston for some reason, but to kill time, we went to uh, Armageddon. And uh, surprisingly, they had a genocide organ there. So as esoteric and uh, obscure as or genocide organ is, I'm just surprised to see that a few of the records I have by them, I have found in record shops. So I uh, had to pick it up immediately. Now, Genocide Organ, when it comes to their live shows, are very few and far between. The only thing that I know that they're going to do for a live show is they're playing that uh, Nuclear War Now and Hospital Production Festival in Japan. And um, what, the first nights all the black metal bands were like with Beharit, surprisingly, they got them to perform with Blasphemy, Departure Chandelier, and other black metal bands. And the second night, once again, it's Beharit of all their electronic work, but it's all the noise bands. So they have Perurian, Masana, and Genocide Organ, which again would be so cool to see. Because from what I've seen online of live shows, they do more of like this performance art with all different machinery they bring on stage and they just start using it to create all different noises. And just visually, they look really cool to see. But again, I doubt I'll ever get the chance to because their shows are, as I stated, few and far between. They're very spread out. They're never in like one particular area. So, um, I don't know, it's a bucket list band to see live, but I highly doubt I'll ever get the chance. But anyway, for this record, I mean, it's a noise record and it's live. So uh, it's not really something I listen to, but it's more of just a collector piece that I got for like, what, 10 or 15 bucks the time I went to Armageddon. So uh, just overall pretty cool to just have it. As for the layout and packaging with it, you have album artwork, backside, comes on a gatefold. This also includes an A2 poster, surprisingly, with the uh, album artwork. Printed inner sleeve, one side with the track listing, other side with a photo collage of, I'm assuming, the live show they did in Japan in 2007, and just comes on standard black vinyl. As for the last material that I have by Genocide Organ, that would be the collaboration they did with Prurient which was one of my favorite albums of last year. And again, it's forms of death industrial and a lot of like this ambient noise soundscape that Perurian is known for. And it's just so cool that what I consider to be two of the best noise related projects working together on an album. And uh, typically I'm not hyped up for noise albums, but this was one of the rare occasions where I bought it just immediately. Surprisingly, this was co-released by both Tesco again the uh, guys of Genocide Organ, they own that label, and Nuclear War Now, so I guess that kind of explains as to why they're doing a fest uh, together with Hospital Productions, but yeah, just wouldn't expect this for that label. But um, yeah, overall, just very bleak, destructive, and not faint for the heart. Noise music that, um, I don't know what else to say about it. If you know Genocide Organ, if you know Perurian, you should know what you're getting yourself into. If you're trying to get into noise, I wouldn't recommend this record uh, per se. As for the layout and packaging with it, it's actually really cool because you have the album artwork right here and it's a cutout of like uh, crosshairs because when you pull it out, there you go with 2013 through 2023. I'm assuming like that's like the t amount of effort they did working together or something, I'm not really sure, but when you put the printed in a sleeve together, it's the 
crosshairs on the skull, which is uh, pretty neat. Backside just has the track listings. And as I stated, a printed inner sleeve, one side with just this uh, passageway of notes or uh, maybe even lyrics, I think. And the other side is just album artwork. And this vinyl press comes on white. And the last record for this vinyl collection part, which is quite the change up from what I just talked about with the last three records of Genocide Organ, <laughs> will be Ghost. This is their latest full length album, Impera. To be honest with you guys, been a fan of them since day one back when I was in high school. And yeah, to be real, I was a fan of it because of the gimmick. I bought into the gimmick, which Ghost is a gimmick band. They've always have been from day one to present day, even though we know who the musicians are and who the vocalist is in real life. There's, they always have been and they always will be a gimmick band and it's just worked for them and they've gained like mainstream appeal because of it. As for the music, yeah, you can state that the first Ghost album was more in realms of like heavy metal and hard rock, but they solely progressed more into pop rock territory and dissolved a lot of their metal influence, which is totally, I think, something to be stated that uh, is valid because, yeah, it just becomes more of like this pop rock metal type of blend that I noticed they always compare to that of uh, ABBA with their songwriting, but it's just more dark and edgier. That I guess you could say Ghost formula is what if King Diamond wrote ABBA songs? The end result would be Ghost. It's the best way to summarize it. And yeah, I find myself always singing along and bopping my head to their songs. Even on this album, like the title track, Spillways, Call Me Little Sunshine, Hunter's Moon, Watcher in the Sky. The stuff is just really anthemic and just earworms for me, and I've always been a fan of it since I discovered them. That being said, the second half of this album is where it falls really short. The track on here, 20s, debatably is like the worst ghost song. Like the lyrics just become way too edgy to even pretend to enjoy and I just don't really end up listening to side B so whenever I listen to this album it's side A and then I just move on to the next record anyway for the layout and packaging with this record you have album artwork backside with the track listing comes with this booklet with just all like artwork and uh lyrics to go along with everything so you have more of like an, a concept of what the songs are about. I also ended up pre-ordering the record so my pre-order came with this uh, slip mat for um, my turntable of just basically the album artwork. Not going to use it but still a pretty cool addition. And this vinyl press comes on gold. And that'll do it for this vinyl collection part. Like always links provided to everything I talked about will be in the description below and that is that. So like always guys, make sure you guys drink plenty of water to stay hydrated and have a great day.